Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 507, Chronic Inflammation and How to Counteract It. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. So last week we did a podcast on inflammatory responses and we made the distinctions and talked mostly about what's called acute inflammatory episodes. Mm-hmm. An acute one is, is a sudden one, a on, sudden onset and doesn't last long. It's, it's caused by a trigger event like an injury or an insult to your body tissue somehow. You fall, you get a scrape, you get a cut, you step on a tack, somebody hits an you. Infection. <laughs> Uh, and you get infections partly as a result of getting the scrape or the cut. No, or, you could have an infection just all by yourself and get inflammation. Well, yeah, like, a- absolutely. Like the flu. Like the flu. Yeah, I'm thinking in terms of an insult to the skin tissues. You're thinking of the whole body mm-hmm. response. And so, so we spent a lot of time talking about acute inflammatory issues. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to talk more this week about the chronic condition. A chronic is more enduring and long term. And if you have pain in a, in a joint like a knee or a hip or knuckles or just anywhere, shoulder, those things that we tend to identify with mm-hmm. aging people and myself tend to identify with aging men because mm-hmm. um, I've talked to more old men than I've talked to more yeah. old women <laughs> uh, about getting old sucks. It hurts. And you have these aches and pains that come all the time. And a lot of them last and sometimes for years. Mm-hmm. And some are caused by things like rheumatoid arthritis, uh, but some are just caused by damage to your body. That you deserve the, because you because <laughs> you've lived hard. Over, yeah, because you've yeah you haven't taken care of yourself, and, or you've exercised through pain. Mm-hmm. You know, pains pains trying to get that runner's high. You just keep pushing through the pain, right. and you'll get better. And that pain is a sign that you should stop. Yeah, <laughs> that, but we don't listen to that all the time. I remember first hearing that as a child uh, or young adolescent, high school student, reading that pain was a good thing. Because I always thought, I read about some mm-hmm. rare cases of people that don't feel pain. Right. And I'm like, oh, that should be really good because, you know, and they're that's like, no, that's deadly. Because you don't know, take your hand out of the fire. You don't know right. that you're cutting your finger, you, uh, you know, sawing a, a board. You don't know because you don't get the pain signal. If, if you've ever had an epidural and you're numb from I've here I've never down, had an epidural. Wonder I've why. Had, I've <laughs> had a couple epidurals. And... You're numb, and then you know your leg flops over on this, on, you know, on the side of the bed or on the rail on the side of the bed, and the next day you've got a big old bruise, and I mean, and you didn't protect yourself from that because you didn't feel the pain. All right. And so that kind of thing happens, but you can, you, it can be worse. It can be deadly if you don't feel pain. So pain is a is a message to you to stop doing what you're doing <coughs> or to get some help with it. Uh, to decrease the pain, but that means decreasing the inflammation because inflammation causes pain. So, so in, in what we're talking about today. But sometimes you have an injury, like, like you step in a hole in your yard and turn your ankle, mm-hmm. and it gets better. But then... Because you get inflammation and you get healed. <coughs> well, that's, that's how it gets better. So sometimes it gets better and you never have a problem with it again. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, years later, you're still having ankle trouble mm-hmm. in certain circumstances. When you walk too far, you get mm-hmm. too tired. I mean, you don't have the resilience that you had mm-hmm. and your ankle hurts again. Mm-hmm. Is that what we're talking about? Is that a chronic pain situation or is that just you, you've done some tendon damage or something and it had... You, you may have, when you're younger, you may have healed from that injury but still have some scar tissue or something else that is there, you may not even remember the re-injury. Right. So the first injury is acute. The second injury is acute, but you don't do what you you should do Uh to make it better. You just assume it's going to get better, like it did when you were younger. So So, so can we talk about your husband? Yes. Because he has a shoulder problem. Yeah. He's damaged his shoulder, Mm -hmm. and he's gotten treatments for it, and things have gotten Mm -hmm. better. But but then they get worse. But they can't do anything about that. Okay. Because he had it, he fell on the ice. He he ripped 
um, a muscle out of his out of his uh, shoulder girdle and off of, off of his scapula, and just from falling. Yeah, that's amazing. well, he felt. Well, no, no, I, I didn't mean to minimize it. Two hundred fifty pounds falling on your shoulder is is yeah. is difficult and hard, and it it does damage a lot of things. Right. But he went to the doctor after I tortured him to go because he's a real man. But, yeah, because like, oh, he get wanted a month to or two. suffer. Yeah. But that suffering's not good for you. But he went to the doctor, and they and his doctor misread the X-ray. Oh. So, so the doctor didn't see the damage or the the tear, didn't fix it, didn't help him with any of that. Just said, you know, go home and it'll be fine. Well, it has never been fine since. And yeah. now the muscle has shrunk up, and there's no way to fix it. You can't make a new muscle. So that's an. <laughs> so I should have known that when it continued to hurt. So he had long-term inflammation, which, even though his cholesterol was being kept low, which caused him to have atherosclerosis because he had long-term pain and long-term um, injury. And so the inflammatory cells were continuing to go to that area. Now he's had a phys physiatrist, Dr. Yadava, who has comes in and helps him with making it better, injecting it or with steroids or with... Uh, uh, anti-inflammatories like Celebrex. So when and pro that athletes helps him. have like Tommy John surgery, is that the kind of thing that we're talking about? They get a damage to the elbow and mm -hmm. tear the tendons and ligaments? Well, yeah, Tommy John surgery fixes that. But but if you have had a muscle rip off and it didn't get diagnosed and it didn't get fixed, right. then it's never going to be better because you can't grow a new muscle. Right, and once it atrophies it just yeah it just shrinks up. you have to get it in time to stretch it back out and keep it stretchable mm -hmm. so you can fix it right so now the point now his goal is we don't want it to hurt because the hurting is a sign of inflammation and we don't want him to have chronic inflammation okay his crp we follow inflammation with a crp test and his inflammation has in the past been pretty high when he went on testosterone it got better and then when he went on an anti-inflammatory, it's now normal. So we've actually helped him with medicine. Okay. Because you can't fix the specific injury. Problem, right. But you can fix the secondary damage, the pain the, and the swelling. Right. And the damage that he's doing to his whole body because it can't be fixed. Right. So, um, Which we talked about last week. If you have a chronic enduring pain, your body's trying to fight that pain, that swelling. Uh, by making swelling in those areas, and, and mm -hmm. so those uh, liquids can dissolve the tissue. They carry white cells that then dissolve every everything, break it down so that you can then reheal. But in this case, they can't break it down and reheal it, but his body is still trying to do that, and so mm -hmm. they keep sending the inflammatory chemicals, mm -hmm. which then can build up in his blood vessels and lead to heart problems. And yeah, it makes the, the fat stick to his blood vessels. Yeah. Even, if it, if, even if his fat le levels are now low... The, you any fat and you you transport fat from your diet and sugar from your diet sometimes is fat and that then has the stickiness of inflammation that sticks to your blood vessels it makes a a, a continual problem but at least now we know that medically mm -hmm. and there are alternative strategies for fighting mm -hmm. it that you were making use of mm -hmm. and okay. that's what we're doing so that he doesn't have ongoing atherosclerosis so we're now trying to hone the atherosclerosis down by dissolving it with a medication called um, Neo40, which increases mm -hmm. nitric oxide, and then it also kind of uh, takes the fat off and puts it into your system and then lets you get it out of your body. And, and if you're curious about Neo40 and the use of nitric oxide, we have done a podcast on that, and mm -hmm. you can find them on, on the list that you'll find on our website. Mm -hmm. um, because it's an interesting discussion to have as mm -hmm. well uh, for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is damage to your heart. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so basically, inflammation in this, in chronic form, is not good for you. So you either have to fix the problem, mm -hmm. which he's also had two knees. He also waited to have those done. So he, I'm sure some damage was done because of that. And um, so if you have bad knees and they tell you you need a new knee, get it. Don't just because the additive damage continue of waiting to live with it. And, and having all of those white blood cells circulating in your body, looking for someplace to attack, mm -hmm. and in the meantime getting absorbed inside your blood vessels and thickening and them, st stimulating the 
like a glue. Yeah. It pulls in the fat and lines the blood vessels with goo. It's almost like the as kids we used to stack dominoes up and then knock them over, you know, and make these designs and stuff. But <laughs> aging is similar as I understand it, as you've taught me, when the dominoes start to fall, you have to make an intervention. Yeah. Otherwise they all just go down the line and collapse. And then you get one more thing and one more yeah. thing and one more thing. So so if you want to be healthy throughout your life, my advice is Take care of a problem. When a doctor says you need to get this fixed, get it fixed. Yeah. Don't just put on this brave um, <laughs> martyrdom and say, oh, I just will live through it. You know, that's well, not good it's, for you. It's, again, it may be me and my ignorance. It could sure be it a, a masculine <laughs> thing. Kidding. But like when I was growing up and didn't have any money, the way I fixed problems with my cars, I turned the radio up louder. Oh, you yeah, hear so you a knock, you hear it, a groan, yeah. or you hear, yeah, you don't want to hear it because you know, oh, there's something wrong. <laughs> My wife would be getting nervous, like, well, what's that sound? What's that sound? We need new uh-huh. brakes. And I'd turn the radio up, and we'd be fine until, until we weren't. Until you weren't. Until we weren't. Until something big and happened. And then, yeah, and then it costs more money than I wanted to deal with. Right. So but, it's always. But I think people are that way. Yeah. And you, you'd rather pay the little price and avoid the big price, and you just try to ignore the big price. What we're saying is that chronic pain is a signal that you should pay attention to because it leads to a big price. Acute pain is a little different. You can survive it. You can suffer through it. You can get it treated, but it'll go away. A chronic pain is a very definite signal that you have a problem that turn the radio up won't fix. Mm -hmm. You need to deal with it. Mm -hmm. There are medical interventions, medical solutions, and we want to run through some of those. I want to talk about what causes inflammation, Okay. chronic inflammation to begin with. So um, we've talked about infection or injury, so a physical injury or an infection causes uh, chronic inflammation if it doesn't uh, resolve itself. Autoimmune disease is where your immune system gets confused and your immune system attacks your own tissues. That's a chronic inflammation. I can watch somebody with... The healthy uh, tissues. Yeah, the healthy tissues, the yeah. good tissues. So it gets confused about what is foreign and what is is self. Right. And so it starts attacking self instead of bacteria or cancer cells. It attacks your good tissues. So that's an autoimmune disease. They are chronic. That's chronic inflammation. And many of the medicines that they use are are aimed at decreasing the inflammation. Okay. So I'm not a fan of them. I like to use uh, testosterone, which decreases inflammation. And I like to use uh, anti-inflammatories rather than something that decreases all your immune system because then you can't heal then you, you catch everything. So right. so I, I, I prefer these other things unless it's so severe that that won't, that won't control it. Sometimes so, the cure is worse than the disease. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it is. It comes at added cost. Long-term exposure to toxins and irritants. If you work in a contaminated environment, and, and uh, I've worked in factories, a lot of those factories have chemicals that you have to have to make the product that you're making, right. mm-hmm. but if you get exposed to them long-term, mm-hmm. they're really problematic for you. They, they live in your fat. Those toxins. So, those toxins are, so what your body does is it puts the toxins that it doesn't know what else to do with, it can't metabolize it, and it puts it in your fat. The more fat you have, the more storage for toxins you have. And then I, I often hear from people as they lose weight, they feel sick. Well, that's the toxins mobilizing. And usually we can get it out. Was well, that the same thing as heavy metal? Of, yeah. Those are have, but it, it also can be benzenes. Benzenes are, are just a chemical used in, like I used it in the lab. We, I don't think we had protective anything on back in the 70s. And we were yeah. using benzenes. It goes right through your skin and into your fat and then immobilizes. I remember as a kid, we used to play with liquid mercury. Right. And play with, I mean. That's a heavy metal. I know. And then. It, it, oh, that doesn't go away. And you can't they get it don't let the it. kids do that anymore. Right. We used to break thermometers and, and take the, the mercury out and play I, with it. I know. I did too. Coated I on I mean, I remember having it in my hand. Yeah. So we didn't know what we know now about mercury. So, <laughs> so there's a lot of us from that era that are walking around with high mercury, which is, is damaging to well, us. In the state of Missouri, and I think all states do, but I know specifically Missouri, they put out reports annually about how much mercury is in the fish in different rivers. If you fish mm-hmm. in Missouri and you catch fish anywhere near the St. Mm-hmm. Louis metropolitan area, the mercury content in those fish, if you eat it, it's going to go in your body and stay. Your body can't yeah. process the mercury and get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's damaging. The, the story about the Mad Hatter. 
Right. Uh, the Mad Hatter inhaled the fumes from the mercury that was used to make pressed felt stick mm-hmm. together to make hats or clothes. Mm-hmm. And over time, it dissolved your brain cells, mm-hmm. and you would become insane if you were a hatter, mm-hmm. if you made hats. So the Mad, Mad Hatter, Hatter was Alice some expert hat maker. Well, yeah. I mean, it was a real it was reality. A real, it was a real thing that happened uh, in the clothing industry. So they quit making hats that way. Right. Thank goodness. Eventually. But, but there's some, there are some uh, toxins that are in your area from the water that you drink. Mm-hmm. If you drink locally, like uh, I don't have, I don't, didn't list this, but I remembered when I was at University of Missouri Medical School, we'd get a lot of babies with um, cleft lip and palate from the southeastern part of Missouri because that's in the lead belt. Okay. They have lead in their ground, in their uh, dirt. They have lead in their water. There's just lead everywhere. It's a heavy metal. And it's one of the ones that if the mother has, um, ha- has a lot of this in her system, it can cause defects of the middle part of the face. So cleft lip and palate, we had tons of those. We also had open neural tube defects like um, spina bifida. So both of those things... Yeah. Were, I actually know a, a child, knew a child from the lead belt area that mm-hmm. had spinal bifida. There's, there's so many of them. And I thought, as a medical student, I just thought that was normal to have that many all the time. Yeah. But then I realized what it came from. So, so toxins <laughs> can ca- cause chronic inflammation as well. And then some chronic inflammatory conditions are caused by our own behavioral choices. <laughs> Things like smoking. If you decide to be a smoker and you continue to smoke, you are exposing yourself to all kinds of down-the-road damage mm-hmm. that can be uh, invested in chronic pain. And, and chronic inflammation. And chronic so inflammation. It, every time you take in a smoke, it inflames your bronchial tubes and your alveoli. Mm-hmm. So then you get all those white blood cells going to those areas, and that damages those tissues. So, so talking about personal choice issues or personal environment issues. I mean, I, I don't smoke. Mm-hmm. My wife doesn't smoke. But we grew up in families where everybody smoked. They mm-hmm. smoked in cars. They smoked mm-hmm. in movie theaters. Smoked on airplanes. Mm-hmm. They smoked Secondary all the time. Secondary smoke is, yeah, is it was, as dangerous, so. especially when you're a kid. Alcohol abuse, mm-hmm. chronic stress, and not drinking. I mean, we're not saying you can't have a glass of wine or a drink of some kind. We're talking about alcoholism. alcohol abuse. Yeah, mm-hmm. and alcoholism. And fetal alcoholism that babies are born with because the mom's... Can't stop drinking. Yeah, can't stop drinking. But that's a whole different kind of a um, abnormality. It doesn't necessarily cause... It's not from inflammation. No, that's not, that, but that's it's, it's from toxic. alcohol abuse. Yeah. yeah. Uh, poor eating and lots of foods that stimulate inflammation. Celiac disease. And that seems to be more prevalent now than it ever was before. Are we celiac- just testing better, or is it more pervasive? We're testing, we're testing it more often, and we're finding that all those... Uh, uh, diseases, we'd say, oh, you just have irritable colon, or oh, you just, you know, oh, you just have irritable bowel constipation, syndrome. and they just treat the symptoms. Now mm-hmm. they're finding that they have an autoimmune kind of reaction to uh, wheat, to gluten. Yeah, and so that that actually causes you to attack your own intestines and make it leaky, and so all of these things that you usually are protected from that stay in your gut and poop out. You absorb. So that causes inflammation. And a lot of the foods that cause inflammation, like deep fat frying, lard, um, many, seriously, many of, no, many of the I, omega I, I grew up sixes. in my grandmother's house, and she had a half gallon, a half, I don't know, size thing of lard on the stove that she mm-hmm. kept there all the time. Mm-hmm. Everything she cooked was fried or boiled. I mean, she only knew two ways to cook something. Well, I, I had a neighbor, my mom wouldn't let me eat at this neighbor's house because she left. Bacon grease out in a coffee can. Oh, yeah. yeah so we the did that all the time growing has, up. has um, aluminum in it, which is a heavy metal. And then you put hot, hot, hot grease, in grease in it. And she'd just scoop it out and put it on anything or, she was cooking. I that did was her that growing oil. up. So you're going to fry a couple of eggs, you get a scoop of bacon grease and throw it in the skillet and fry the eggs. And that's omega 6. You have to decrease your omega 6. Fats and increase your omega. Th- now uh, you three. tell me. I know. Well, yeah. we didn't have a choice because we didn't know. The whole point of these health casts are so you know you can, right. if you right. choose to, you can take the appropriate action. Yeah. So sugar is an inflammatory. White flour for people who have celiac disease is, is an inflammatory. So you decrease those 
foods in your diet and increase fruit and vegetables and fresh foods, fresh meat, yeah. without and cut the fat off. Right. So basically, those are those are things you can do. So if you have or think you have from this list that we're talking about chronic inflammatory problems, there are two tests, two types of tests that can generally identify that uh, if they don't if they don't see it because of some more obvious reason. Right. If if they can't figure out what's wrong then they can check to see if you have inflammation. And so they can do a, a highly sensitive CRP, which tells you it's a little picture of what's going on today. And that goes up if you're sick, because if you're inflamed from sickness acutely, or if you're chronically if you're chronically inflamed. So if I get two of those tests and they're always high, then I know that there's some, some form of chronic inflammation I have to go looking for. But if you get a sed rate, which is sedimentation rate, that gives you like a three-month picture of that's inflammation. That's the other test. The CRP is one, test. sedimentation rate is right. another. Right, that's the other test so that we can see if we chronically have long-term inflammation. Okay. And then there are some things, strategies, dietary changes, things that you can do to help attack the problem of chronic inflammation without medicines. There are medicines... There are interventions that can be done. We talked about those when we talked about John. Mm -hmm. But there are some other things. Uh, NSAIDs, like Motrin, Aleve, et cetera. What is an NSAID? And is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. I love it when you explain all that stuff. Yes. So um, Motrin and Aleve are actually great anti-inflammatory agents, except they can also cause you to have an ulcer. So you have to take them with food. You, taking them for long term is not ideal. So, so my wife and I go for long walks every day, especially now during the, the COVID crisis. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did walk six or eight miles the other day. And I sat down to read a book. And I got up to go somewhere. And I was stiff and achy. Mm -hmm. And I was complaining about it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm locking up. Everything's free. And she said, go take and leave. Mm -hmm. And that's what she's talking yeah, about. Decreasing and that's a, the inflammation. That's, that's an acute response. Dr. Phyllis was right. <laughs> Thank God. She's right. So um, sometimes um, steroids, which is a prescription, uh, you can you can take short-term steroids. That will decrease the inflammation as well. But a doctor has to write the prescription. Right. But the supplements. Fish oil, which flaxseed. Which we, all, we yeah. all take. Yeah. Fish oil and flaxseed oil, curcumin or curcumax and alpha lipoic acid. Those are all anti-inflammatory. So if you have an anti, if you have an inflammation problem that's chronic, you put those into your supplements. Okay. That will help. All right. Neo and forty we talked about. Neo forty we talked about drinking green tea or drinking coffee. Both of those help. Yeah, they both help inflammation. Believe it or not. Okay. And I'm not saying drink twenty cups of coffee a day, but a couple cups but of coffee. My doctor told me I can have a lot of coffee. I want, yeah. Yeah. So the um, so the lifestyle changes you can you can list them but well you have to stop junk food which every doctor in the world is going to tell you and you should know and all of us do know but we like the junk food because no it's Cheetos addictive. no yeah. Fritos no you know stop foods made with white sugar and white flour because they've all been bleached out the mm -hmm. nutrients have been taken out right. and it's just bulk filler it's mm -hmm. like eating cardboard uh, stop <laughs> eating fried foods processed meat like hot dogs and bologna mm -hmm. uh, that, they're all inflammatory. Eat more fresh berries and oranges, which you've said. More fish, mm -hmm. sardines and mackerel mm -hmm. specifically. Those are really good, good anti-inflammatory fish. Nuts of all kinds? Mm -hmm. are not all kinds. Even cashews? Because I've read yeah. that cashews are not as good as others. They may not be as good, but they're still an they're still good. Okay, so eat nuts, tomatoes, greens with spinach, uh, kale, olive oil, those things. Lose weight. Mm -hmm. Stop smoking. Uh, mm -hmm. Reduce drinking. I'm not going to say stop drinking. Mm -hmm. Reduce drinking. Stop taking illicit drugs. Be a good citizen. Stop that. <laughs> no cocaine. No, and, and get no some exercise. Opium. Those are lifestyle changes over which you have control. And if you exercise that control, you can reduce the likelihood of severe chronic pain problems that will lead you to a painful and early death. So please pay attention to that. Don't delay the treatment if you've got something wrong with you. Make sure you get it taken care of in a timely fashion. So procrastination is not your friend as you age. Amen. Thank, Thank you, for you for joining us. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin.
and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.